Yo, what is up guys? Del Boy here, aka Blue Collar Sports TV. Hopefully you guys are doing well. If you're new here, smash that like, hit subscribe, all of that good stuff. So, Luis Alberto Lopez, or Venado, defeats Michael Conlon by a brutal 5th round knockout to retain his IBF featherweight title. Now this was a good fight as long as it lasted. Of course this fight was in Michael Conlon's hometown of Belfast and it created for a really good atmosphere and I felt that both fighters were really feeding off that crowd energy and I felt that was a detriment to Michael Conlon uh, quite frankly. And yeah this fight was competitive throughout but I always got the impression that this was Bernardo Lopez's fight more so than Michael Conlon's. Bernardo Lopez is used to going in the trenches, exchanging, loading up on big power shots, forcing a really high pace on his opponents. Whereas Michael Conlon comes from a good amateur pedigree. Uh, he's a good boxer. Primarily, he likes to keep his opponents at range behind a jab, and he'll switch between orthodox and southpaw throughout his fights. He has a pretty good point scoring style uh, that remains from the amateurs and to me those are his strengths, you know, utilising his height and reach, he's quite a tall featherweight and keeping it long. That, that's where I think Michael Conlon is at his best but in this fight with Bernardo Lopez, Michael Conlon was holding his feet a lot more than I expected early in this fight and right from the very first bell, I got the impression that his tactics were suicide in the long run because ultimately he was giving Bernardo Lopez the opportunities to exchange with him and land hard punches despite Michael Conlon having his own successes is in his more flat-footed style. He was landing good shots on Bernardo Lopez but again you knew going into this fight that there was a power difference and you know despite what Conlon landed I never felt that Lopez was ever in danger of getting hurt or, you know, Conlon getting on top of him kind of thing. But regardless, the first round, both guys started at a really good pace. Uh, Conlon was mixing up his straight left hand from a southpaw stance to body and head. He was changing levels with it, uh, but holding his feet in the meantime. Whereas Lopez was doing what, what Lopez does, he was firing quick uppercuts from his waist. You know, you watch Lopez fight and... Um, he does a lot technically wrong, but he makes it work for himself. He throws punches at weird angles that can overwhelm his opponents. He generates good power on his punches. And actually, he's got underrated speed as well. Especially from a um, defensive standpoint, he, he's got really good reaction time, Lopez, to where he can pull away from a shot or even just take the sting off it. But first round was really competitive. I really enjoyed it. I actually felt Michael Conlon had some good success in round two. Uh, he tried to fight fire with fire and um, push Lopez back. And he had some success doing that. He was landing some good, like I say, good left hands to the body. And he was trying to walk down Lopez uh, while kind of trying to evade those uppercuts. He was taking his head off center line, uh, walking down Lopez, having some good success. Lopez would fire back with his own shots. But I felt round two was a good round for uh, Michael Conlon, but again, I go back to it. He was ex he was expanding a lot of energy in doing so. That is not Michael Conlon's natural fight. Lopez is used to that sort of pace. He's used to that sort of fight. So Lopez, despite losing round two, he wasn't out of his element. He looked very calm, he looked very composed, and he was fine with what was in front of him, despite him losing round two. It was Conlon who was fighting a fight in which was unusual to him. It's not the norm for Conlon to be that aggressive. And I felt at the time, if this fight goes long at this pace, Conlon would be in trouble down the stretch. Round 3 was once again a really high-paced round. Uh, Conlon once again trying to hold his feet, trying to get Lopez's respect, uh, throwing to the body as he was in the previous two rounds. But Lopez in the third round was having a much better success rate of landing his single power shots. He was picking his shots much better. And actually in round three, if you go back and watch it, Lopez was actually countering uh, Michael Conlon at times. He was countering Conlon as he was coming in with the uppercut. 
and he was landing some really good punches on Michael Conlon, real hard shots as well. In the third round, Lopez also landed, I believe, like a right, like a, I think it was an overhand right, it may have been an uppercut, but he hurt Conlon in round three as well. Uh, Conlon was a little bit buzzed by that shot, but Conlon sees out the round, he, he remains tough, he remains resilient, and he sees out round three. At this point in time, again, I felt the writing was on the wall, to be honest. In round four, it looked like Conlon was finally um, starting to fight with his strengths, boxing behind the jab, maintaining range. But once again, he loses, I guess, composure, maybe, concentration. Again, I think the crowd, the, the loud crowd, which, was, which had a great atmosphere, a great energy, which in my opinion, Conlon was buying into too much. And he kind of uh, resorted back to fighting after a decent start to round four by boxing. Once again, holding his feet, getting too greedy, which gives Lopez the chances he needs. Um, Lopez had really good success with his lead right hand in the fourth round. He was catching Conlon with that shot. And he was quickly closing distance on Conlon. He was throwing shots as he was moving forwards. And, and he quickly closed the, uh, closed the distance on Conlon and got close to him. And then, of course, he would land some big shots from there. As round four progressed, to me at least, it really seemed like Lopez was getting a big foothold in this fight and starting to get to Conlon a little bit. But anyway, round five was where the fight ended. Uh, Lo uh, Lopez started the round really well, connecting with big power shots, including a left hand. And it looked, it looked to me like Conlon was really unravelling at this point in time. And that was proved correct when, when uh, Lopez landed a monster uppercut as Conlon kind of dipped. He kind of dipped down, uh, level changing. Uh, Lopez lands a massive uppercut. It sends uh, Conlon backwards, lands on his back, hurt, badly hurt by the shot. And uh, the referee then, sorry, the, the corner throws in the towel as the referee is counting. But yeah, Conlon was not going to recover from that. He got oxygen after this fight. And uh, Lopez retained his title in, in really good fashion. It was a good fight. And for me, it was the, the most enjoyable fight of the weekend. I just like the approach of Lopez. There's no fucks given. He goes in there for a scrap. He goes in there for a fight. He goes for a knockout. That's what I want to see from fighters, plus he's got a unique style, he's very unorthodox, he does certain things that look all wrong from a technical standpoint, but he makes it work for himself, he'll lead with power shots and, and throw shots from crazy angles, he's actually really good at punching while quickly closing the distance coming forwards, he, he kind of almost shifts as he punches, he, he's got some unique attributes in my opinion that I believe would cause a lot of guys trouble and you know featherweight right now is looking quite interesting I don't think there's a clear-cut number one guy right now but I think Lopez is as dangerous as anybody in the weight class of course I would love to see Lopez versus Lee Woods I think that would be a tremendous fight but I think the more likely fight is Luis Alberto Lopez versus Rebasi Ramirez. Uh, I, I think that would be a tremendous fight. I think both guys are with top rank. It would be a unification fight. Ramirez bringing that Cuban style of boxing, really technically efficient. But Lopez brings different attributes to the table, power. He's got a really unique style um, that you can't really, or it's hard to prepare for. I've got a feeling, you know, I, I, I think Ramirez is very good. I've got a slight feeling Lopez beats him. I've got a I've got a sneaky feeling Lopez beats him, but I find that fight fascinating. I really do. I think that may be the best fight at featherweight. Rebasi Ramirez versus Luis Alberto Lopez. I know most people I've seen are picking um, would pick Ramirez to beat Lopez, but I'm not so sure, man. I'm not so sure. But yeah, I think that's the fight I want to see. Again, though, I'd like to see him fight Lee Woods or even Brandon Figueroa. There's fights out there for him, you know. Um, but yeah, very, very interesting fighter. Very entertaining. I've spoke about Lopez a little bit on this channel. Uh, we backed him to beat Josh Warrington. I had a good feeling about that fight. He beat Warrington in his hometown of Leeds to win that IBF title at featherweight. 
and he's now gone to Belfast defending his title away from home. So credit where it's due, I think Lopez is a really fun fighter. Really fun fighter. And yeah, I felt it was a good main event. It was a good main event. As for Conlon, I think um, I think coming back from this loss will be very hard. You know, two bad knockout losses in his last three fights. One to Lee Woods in a fight in which he was winning. And, you know, the Lopez fight, he kind of got dominated a little bit. It's going to be hard to come back from. Um, quite frankly, I, I, know, I know Conlon has some good technical skills. He moves well. Um, he's got some nice moves, things of that nature. But his style just doesn't look cut out for the top level of the pro game. Especially when it comes to re uh, relentless guys with power with a never-say-die attitude like uh, Bernardo Lopez and even Lee Woods. Um, so yeah, coming back from this for Michael Conlon will be very difficult. I, I wouldn't be shocked if he retires from this point in time, to be honest. Very good amateur, had a great amateur career, but it's not quite worked out for him as a pro. And I have to say, I don't think Adam Booth was the right trainer for Michael Conlon. I think Conlon has a style that could work with Adam Booth, but I think that sort of style, you need to be a big puncher, and Michael Conlon just isn't, you know? Adam Booth does his best work with guys like David Hay, an explosive guy, a very big puncher, a guy who can get in and out, ambush with big power shots, and utilize his athleticism and explosive attributes. Same with George Groves as well, when Groves was with uh, Adam Booth, but guys like Michael Conlon and uh, Josh Kelly, to me these guys are, are not suited to Adam Booth, that's just my opinion. But anyway, share your thoughts below, what did you make of this fight? What do you want from Lopez next, and where does Conlon go from here? Share your thoughts below, peace.